Did you want to appear from below the box? Like, if you just like, <laughs> can you see her? <laughs> Hey everybody, Thomas Joseph, and as I promised you, today I'm here with my dear friend and my older sister. <laughs> older sister. My He's so kind, right? Sarah yes. Carey, you all know her, and today we're going to be answering your questions. Yeah, you know, he's on my channel. <laughs> And we've received so many great questions, over 500 questions, and today we're gonna to answer a handful of them. But as always, write in the comment section, but as always, write in the comment section below because we wanna hear from you. Now, we promised that one lucky person, person viewer, commenter, would receive an enameled cast iron casserole from our Martha Stewart collection at Macy's, and that winner is. Do you want to say it? Cooking with Cricket. Cooking with Cricket. So Yay! look out in your mailbox, although this probably will go directly to your door because it's so big, but we are sending this to you as well as a signed cookbook from Martha herself. So let's get into these questions. I right? want to. I'm excited. All yes. right. You're up first. So we have Banana Wallaby asking, how do you make sure your banana bread stays moist? We actually have a great recipe for banana bread, and it should be really moist because banana adds moistness. A lot of banana breads have either oil or butter in them. So a great banana bread, you shouldn't have any problems with dryness. So check out our recipe and watch our video. Ashley XO is asking, what is the best substitute for buttermilk? I don't use it often enough to buy it because I feel as though the rest is wasted. Hmm. Yeah. So you need to acidify milk, and so what does that mean? Okay, well you need to either add lemon juice or vinegar, that's my preferred method, but you have a slightly different method, right? I always have yogurt in my house, and so when I don't have buttermilk, which is almost all the time, I just take a combination of half yogurt, half milk, or maybe a little bit more milk, and I whisk those together, and then I just replace the buttermilk with that mixture. So it's, it's sort of similar. And I haven't tried Sarah's method, but I think it might actually be better when you're baking because it will have more of a similar texture to yeah. store-bought buttermilk, which is thicker than if yeah. you make it from milk and vinegar or lemon. Let's see, Jackie G, how can I cook the most perfect moist chicken for salads, sandwiches, and wraps? I did a video on the secret to roasting a flavorful chicken breast, and that is making sure that you buy chicken breasts on the bone with the skin on. You can always remove them after, but it really helps to keep the moisture in, right? I, yeah, I And the flavor. And Wait. don't overcook it. I mean, honestly, yeah. I think that people often overcook their chicken, which is why it's dry. People are afraid of chicken. They've been told that it's like really, really bad if it's undercooked, if they can get salmonella. You're not necessarily going to get salmonella, but you should use an instant read thermometer to check the doneness so that you're not overcooking it. Right. Very important. Very important. Invest in your tools. Okay, next. Melissa, solemn mom, what's the trick to boiling veggies? I still want my veggies to keep a vibrant color. I, I think we can answer this. Yeah, sure. Do you, you, want, you want me you to answer first. it? Okay. I like to bring a large pot of water to a boil, add a generous amount of salt, that's for flavor, and then add my vegetables, bring them back to a boil really quickly, and then just cook them until they're bright green and remove them. The best way to stop the cooking, if you really, really like want to hold them for later, is to put them into an ice water bath yep. to completely stop the cooking. But honestly, half the time, I just take them out when they're just done, and then they're fine. They yep. don't overcook. Just don't leave them in the water too long. They'll get gray and mushy, and you will be not happy. I agree with that. Who's next? Naira. D-L-C-R, I think. And no. she has, he has, this person has. Oh, we don't know. We don't know, a guacamole nightmare. <laughs> Whoa. Um, no, there's nothing worse than a guacamole nightmare. How do, I, how do I keep it from browning? Well, here's one thing. If your guacamole has acid in it, like lime juice, that automatically keeps it from browning. But if you're making it ahead of time and you want to ensure that it doesn't brown, I like to lay a piece of plastic wrap directly on the surface of the guacamole and sort of press it down, and that keeps the air out, which is what makes the guacamole turn brown. Oxidation. Who's after that? We Julia Campos. How do we make the best salted caramel? Um, caramel is hard to work with. Now, I think caramel is a little intimidating it for is. people. It's scary. But it shouldn't be. The thing is, you can always make it again, right? It's pretty cheap. 
It's pretty cheap, it's but pretty it cheap. can be discouraging, yeah. especially if it crystallizes, which is like my biggest nightmare. Crystallization, that's when little crystals form on the top of your sugar, on top of the pot. Um, and to prevent that from happening, what you need to do is you need to kind of um, use a wet brush, mm -hmm. a pastry brush around mm -hmm. the sides. And as these crystals build up on the outside of the pan or the inside of the pan, you brush them down. Or you can use a lid, which will help because the steam Great will steam. rise and then the steam drips down the sides and it does the same right. thing. Also, lemon juice. Lemon juice. Acid helps in preventing crystallization. When you're making caramel, I always say, cook it a little darker than you think, because when you're cooking it in a darker pan, like a metal pan, it always seems like it's darker than it really That's is. That's so funny, because I always say take it off before you think it's done, because it continues cooking when you remove it from the heat. Yeah, that's so interesting. It is interesting, see? Huh. There's no final answers for anything. If you're intimidated by making caramel, again, what you could do is put a little bowl of ice water off to the side. If you do end up burning yourself or if you're worried about that, you can always plunge your finger yeah. into a bowl of ice water. Plunge your blistering finger into a bowl of ice water <laughs> right. and everything will be fine. And then, call, is and then fine. call 911. And then call 911. Um, and then our last question is Fiona Bingo, tips to being a better chef. I think this is a great question. Yeah. You think this is a great question. I think it is a great question. I mean, there are so many things that come with practice, and but things that I tell people when they're first starting off, and that is to be confident in the kitchen. If a recipe says to take something out after 45 minutes and you look at it, and it's supposed to be golden brown and it's not, don't take it out because it's probably not done. Maybe your oven is a different temperature than our oven. Maybe your flame is lower than ours. So you have to sort of learn to trust your instincts and also look at the visual cues as well as the timing cues. So that's really important because I think that people undercook things or overcook them a lot. Yep. I always like to say always be prepping yes. so that you're moving back and forth and that gives you more time in the kitchen by allowing you to be cooking something and cutting up an onion at the same time. If you learn to move back and forth between those two things, it makes you a more efficient chef. Invest in some good tools. I mean, we were just talking, yeah. there's nothing more important than having a sharp knife. Um, so sharp knives, sharp knives, get some good pans, get some good you know, gadgets and tools and tongs and things like that. Equip yourself with uh, what you need <clears throat> to be a successful cook. It's not a lot of things, but the things that you have should be of good quality. Because right. if you have a really thin pan, it might burn something or it might warp and then everything gets ruined. What quality. Yeah. And then just cook a lot and do it with love. Practice makes perfect, right? <laughs> I mean, that's it. I don't know about perfect, we just practice but a lot. getting better. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks guys, thank you for all of your questions. It really means a lot for us to hear from you. So keep them coming and stay tuned for our next Q&A.